What's up guys, Humphrey Yang here. Today we're talking about the different types of psychological tricks that retailers love to use to get you to spend more money. We're gonna talk about why they use them, why they're successful, and if you're just cognizant of them, how you can save more money by knowing their tactics. Right now on the screen, I'm bringing up basically this is the Best Buy website, and you can see that this is an example of what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. You'll see that this TV, the Samsung 50 inch TV is $399 but it was $429.99. Now, why do they even put that there? It's probably for a reason. Now, just to give you a little bit of background about why I'm qualified to talk about this topic, I used to work for one of the top grossing mobile games on the iOS and Android store. And during that time, we would use different types of psychological tricks to get people to spend a little bit more money when they were playing their games. I used to own an e-commerce store and we would use a lot of the same tactics to get people to spend a little bit more money when they visit our website to make us a little bit more profitable. So my point with this video is as long as you're cognizant of what's going on with retailers and how they're using different tricks to get you to spend more money, you're gonna be able to save money in the long run because as long as you're aware, you'll know how to basically defend against it because the people that aren't aware are the people that are gonna spend more money. So let's check out the number one thing that all retailers, especially online retailers, like to do these days and roll the title slide. The first principle or the first sales tactic that a lot of retailers like to use is called anchoring. It's also known as price anchoring. And what does that even mean? Well. Humans are really reliant on information and data to make decisions. So as a retailer, you can kind of set that first data point to give the customer an idea of what something should cost, or you're actually giving them a frame of reference. So you'll see this happen a lot, especially at places like Costco, for example. When you go to Costco, they put the TVs at the front, and the TVs are generally the most expensive items within the entire warehouse, besides obviously like the diamond rings and the jewelry that they have. But when they do this, you're seeing a really high price when you get into Costco. And therefore, when you go throughout the rest of the store, your frame of mind is already anchored towards the higher end of the spectrum. And you feel really good about yourself if you don't spend two or $3,000 that day because maybe you saw a TV that you liked when you walked in, but you said, no, thank you. But then you spend $500 on you know the rest of your grocery trip at Costco. That was a form of price anchoring. McDonald's prices their fries in a really interesting way. Let me show you guys. So. At McDonald's, a medium is $1.79 for a medium fry. A large is $1.89, and a small is $1.39. Can you spot the anchor here? Well, the anchor here would be actually the $1.89 large french fry. The reason this is happening is they like to put the $1.89 for a large right next to the medium, which is $1.79, which is 10 cents less. Most people are probably opting for the medium, let's be real. If you do opt for the medium, you're looking at the pricing sheet and you're kind of going, well, it's $1.79 for a medium or I can pay 10 cents more to get a large. Now, when you're doing a small versus a medium comparison, you're looking at a, you know, a 40 cent difference. But for those people that are ordering medium, which I assume are their bulk of their customers, they are you know, put to a decision between the $1.79 or the $1.89. And of course, a lot of people are going to just choose the large because it's only 10 cents more. And this is the beauty and the brains of McDonald's is, okay, 10 cents more might not seem much to you, but at a scale of millions of people, it's gonna be a lot more for their top and bottom lines. So that is another example of price anchoring that we see in our everyday lives. Anchoring is just referring to any one price that's set next to a different price. So remember my first example in the intro of the video where I showed you that Best Buy TV? I'm gonna bring it up right now again. So that TV was $429.99, but now it's $399.99. So you are getting a what's called a perceived deal and it looks like a lot better deal than it is. Similarly, you're gonna find price anchoring all across the internet. So, you know, when you go to an e-commerce website, just pay attention to the pricing and how they make or mark their sales because oftentimes they'll put a large anchored price right next to it. And you'll see this in subscription models a lot too. To really beat anchoring and beat the retailers of their own game, just stop for a little bit and think about what that item is worth to you. Because when you do this and you practice this exercise, you're gonna get a lot better at kind of discerning value across all different types of products. And you're probably gonna save money in the long run because you know what retailers are trying to do. 
Now, I'm not saying I've never fallen victim to an anchoring, you know, an anchoring price tactic. It happens to me all the time. I like really fancy things sometimes, and sometimes I'll see a standing desk and it's, like, you know, like $5,000. I'm like, oh my God, that's a like $5,000 standing desk, right? But then they have an option that's $1,000, and I'm like, oh wow, $1,000 standing desk? That's great. Maybe I should get that because this desk is not a standing desk. I can't really lift it up right now. But if it was $1,000, maybe I would do it. But what's crazy is that I didn't even want to spend a thousand dollars in the first place. Like, why should I be spending a thousand dollars in the first place? Well, if I didn't see that initial five thousand dollar standing desk, the ultra premium one that whatever the website had, that thousand dollar standing desk might have been a price shock to me, and maybe maybe I would have opted for something even cheaper. But because I only had one other frame of reference, which was the five thousand dollar desk, the thousand dollar desk seemed like such a good deal to me that I might have opted for it. For the record, I still haven't bought a standing desk, but that is something that I might wanna get in the future. The second principle that a lot of these retailers like to use is something called a fake sale. I like to call them fake because they don't really seem like real sales to me, but they are actually technically sales, but that's what the retailer calls them. I don't believe that they're sales. I'm gonna give you an example right here. We're just gonna to go to Joseph A. Bank. And Joseph A. Bank is one of these websites and these retailers actually, they have a lot of brick and mortar stores. They have one in my area they seemingly are always running a 60% off sale. Like, dude, how can you guys always be 60% off or 80% off? And you know that, the, guys, this is not even real. Like, they're just doing that to give you a perceived idea that they're running such a big sale. And to the first time customer of Joseph A. Bank, I don't, actually, they're not even called Joseph A. Bank. They're just called Jose A. Bank. I didn't realize that. So Jose A. Bank, for the first time customer, you're gonna walk by that store, you're gonna say, oh, 60% off, that's a great deal. But then you walk by that store another four or five times in the next five months, and what do you know? They're always doing like a 60% off sale. How can you always be 60% off? Well, it's just a pricing tactic. So a lot of retailers will do this. A lot of drop shipping websites will do this too. I'm gonna to pull up a drop shipping website right now for you guys. Here's an example of a drop shipping store. It's come from this store called Vispana.com. I don't know who they are. I wouldn't even support them at all. You can just tell by the product page that it's just a piece of crap website. But you'll notice here that they have this 69.97 right here and it's always crossed out and right next to it is 34.97. Okay, so it's half off and that's basically what it is. Is it actually half off? No, probably not. This thing probably costs 10 bucks to make, maybe a little bit less from China, and they're just setting a really high price. Like, why would a spice organizer rack that's made of plastic be $70 in the first place? So, this tactic seems to work a lot, and it does really well for dropshipping websites and tons of other online retail websites as well. So, when you're visiting an online website like this, just be really careful and be always skeptical of their pricing because they're not trying to be genuine all the time. They're just trying to get you to spend the most money or make an impulse purchase that you would not have done otherwise. So this tactic is pretty common and it's also kind of using the first principle which is anchoring. And so anytime you have a sale or a discount, you're gonna be trying to compare one price versus the other and they're trying to give you a perceived deal. In one article that I read, Shopify even shared some powerful statistics saying that merchants with an active discount code are eight times more likely to make a sale. So that shows you the power of a discount or the power of a sale, if you will. The next tactic that a lot of retailers like to use is the good old time is running out, even though it's really not. Let's talk about this one a lot because the Home Shopping Network loved to use this in the 90s and 2000s, and actually it probably still does it today. And there's a lot of websites out there that still use the time-sensitive offer, as well as a lot of commercials that you'll see these days. For example, a, a car, sometimes they have a limited time offer. You'll always hear the word limited time or it's ending soon because these time-sensitive offers make it feel like to the customer that the offer won't be there forever. And when the offer is not there for forever, it causes people to use a lot more impulse purchase behavior to make their decisions rather than a rational, methodical thinking. According to this article right here, that creating a sense of urgency helps this person increase their sales by over 332%. That's pretty crazy. Let me show you the same website, which was the multi-storage spice rack or whatever the hell. It has some sort of, oh, here we go. It has a time sensitive call out right here. And it says the sale is ending in 11 hours, et cetera, et cetera. 
But is the sale really ending? I bet I could come here tomorrow, film this same video, and I guarantee you that this page would not change. And it's probably just based on my cookies, and you know, it works on people because when people think that they have a time limit, they're more likely to purchase. So this product page is actually really well done because they're optimizing for just a single purchase. If you want returning customers, this stuff isn't gonna work all the time. My point here is that time is rarely running out. There's always like a great time to buy something. And oftentimes, even if the offer has ended, let's say the offer ends next Monday and you go in on a Tuesday to buy whatever you wanted, say it's a t-shirt at Urban Outfitters. I'm sure that you could talk to the management there and say, hey, I just missed the sale by a day. Could I still be honored? Could I still get that same sale applied to my t-shirt? And oftentimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll say no, sure, that makes sense if they have, you know, they're really corporate and they have an exact deadline. But a lot of these places will just extend that offer because time is not really running out. There's always time to buy stuff. It's just they want you to think that it's running out. So don't fall for that. With that being said, there are some really good times to buy stuff. And that leads me to my next point and my next tactic, which are holiday sales. Retailers love to use holidays to sell to you. The reason why that is, is because they're finite in their nature. There's only one a year. So retailers love using this. Car dealerships love using different types of holidays to sell you things. Have you ever seen a President's Day automobile sale advertised on the television? Well. Have you ever asked yourself, like, why do they choose President's Day? What's so special about President's Day that it makes, you know, a great sale for cars? To be honest, I don't know the answer, but I do know that if I was a car manufacturer or a car dealer, if my slowest time of the year was around President's Day, I might just use that holiday to get a sales boost. According to this Google search here, the best time to buy a car is actually October, November, or December. So it kind of does make sense that the car dealer would choose President's Day for an auto sale just because it's a slower time of year. My point is, is that whenever you see a holiday sale, don't just automatically assume it is a good deal. It's often just used as an excuse to sell you more stuff. However, if you do see a really good deal during the holidays, try to take advantage of it. I mean, if you do want to buy stuff, it's better to wait for the holidays because there's usually some sort of deal or good offer going around. I personally love shopping right before Black Friday or right during Black Friday because I know that a lot of the stuff that I had wanted throughout the year will go on discount. Yes, I'm sort of playing into the whole Black Friday kind of deal, but I've noticed that I will save more money in the long run if it's say something I really, really wanted and on Black Friday it just happens to be on sale. Black Friday has sales for things that are typically not on sale throughout the year. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a pretty quick one. I just wanted to share these quick tips that uh, could help you save money and also now you know how retailers like to sell you things. As always, don't forget to subscribe to me here. I post videos Tuesdays and Fridays now and don't forget to drop a like as well because that helps the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate all you guys watching me and leaving me great comments. Um, please keep leaving me comments. I love engaging with you guys and I look forward to making great content and continuing to do so. So that's it. That's the video. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. See you later.